Ooh. Okay, so to the script. So these are gonna be things that are different from Pathfinder, Dungeons and Dragons, and specifically um, Cyberpunk Red. I think that's the name of that RPG. I don't know, I learned about it like three days ago, so. Um, <clears throat> so here. So on that note, what is it called? So I already said that, it's gonna be called Savage Dragon RPG. And you'll be, and you may be asking yourself, well, what's this gonna be? What what's this gonna offer over Dungeons and Dragons? And all those other main stream RPGs are awesome. And um, I'm gonna give you guys some reasons, really quick, that my RPG is a little bit better. I wouldn't say completely better because I have. I'm gonna make so many changes probably once I release it. Um, but combat system in Dungeons and Dragons sucks and it makes me want to throw up I'm a dungeon master if you're new to the channel and my hate for combat is immeasurable because every time my players go into combat I'm just thinking how can I make this as short as possible I've even had I think the shortest combat I've ever had was five minutes because they hit it and I was just like you know what I don't care it's dead and I got, I was just not in the mood that day. Uh, that was like four, five, six sessions ago, and it was painful. Um, so, number one, my RPG is gonna have no classes. In my game, class, so instead of classes, uh, your class will be determined, or, our, or well, your occupation uh, will be determined by collecting items and just building off of what you want and keeping what you want and getting rid of it. So that so if you want like uh, say you have a sword that's like super cool and then you have this bow that's super super cool, but you want to be more of a ching ching guy than a pew pew kind of guy, then you would pick the sword. And since you have limited item slots, that's gonna force you to uh, change how much stuff you have and that's one thing that has always bothered me as a dungeon master uh, in D&D is I'm trying to keep track of everything my players have I have um, my, my brother he loves collecting stuff in D&D and the amount of crap by the end of every session that he's gained I'm just like whoa wait did I give you all of this and he's like yes yes you did I'm like I don't remember it but you have like five freaking pages of crap that I don't even remember. Um, so, so yeah, your class, well, your occupation or class will be determined by what you collect as items. So you can collect wands and stabs and swords, and if you want, you don't have to take anything. It's your choice. It's all completely up to you. Uh, next, magic. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons has a um, has a set list of spells that you are required to use. But in Savage, in my RPG, you will be able to create your own spells and even mix and combo spells to create epic, awesome effects and moments. Now, that's just one thing that my first Dungeon Master I loved about what he did. He allowed us to combine spells. Of course, we had to remove like all of our spell slots for it, but it led to some epic moments. I can't remember them exactly and vividly, but I do know every time we combined some of our spells, well not every time, but almost every time we combined our spells, it led to this epic moment that we would typically end the session on, and it was awesome. Um, next, diversity. So, in most role-playing games, they have a specific genre or theme that they're aiming towards. And Dungeons and Dragons has a fantasy genre. Cyberpunk Red has the cyberpunk the, 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 cyberpunk genre under control. And Pathfinder, actually, I don't I don't know what they do. Um. So, anyways, my RPG is going to be able to you be used in any setting, and I'm going to create contacts. For fantasy, sci-fi, modern, futuristic co country, historical, and other games. So I'm going to be making uh, different parts for my game. So I'm starting with the fantasy genre. And I'm trying to make it so that these can be used in, for any genre. 
Um, so I'm gonna have to be like, oh, so since there's magic, I'm gonna have to make it so that there's like a thing that just acts like magic and sci-fi, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm also gonna try to make it so that the different genres can mix. So I'm making a world right now where uh, it's kind of like a flat worldish kind of thing, but like the flat worlds are pillars. It made makes sense in my head, but now that I'm saying it, it kind of doesn't make sense. Well, anyways, uh, like one world might have had magic, so they didn't evolve as quickly as this other world that didn't have magic, and this other world that didn't have magic has like these massive spaceships and stuff. So yeah. Um, next, history. I'm gonna be writing pre-written adventures that take place during different historical events and you will be able to talk, discuss, and influence politics of the old world. You also, you will also be able to learn things that you probably didn't know before. So, I love history. It's the one thing I'm good at, um, besides playing Dungeons and Dragons and my own RPG. Uh, but I'm gonna make it so that you can go into, let's say, the Shakespearean time period and your character, your players, or you can go through this awesome world of uh, adventure and be in a Shakespearean setting and you can learn things like uh, little facts about Shakespeare will pop up here and then little facts about Elizabeth will pop up there and you'll just learn these cool things throughout the game. Um, oh, for a lot of this part. Okay, so the combat system. This is probably my favorite part about my RPG. A combat system is different than any other RPG I could find. So the way that the combat system works is that you have yourself and your enemy first, you both roll to attack. Then whoever rolls higher will be successful. If you are the defender and you are higher, he does not hit you. And if you are the attacker and you hit him, then if you have armor on you, you will decrease the damage amount depending on how good your armor is. And shields will give you a plus to your defense roll. So, let's say you're wearing armor, okay? And one thing I don't like about me and D is pretty much your armor is you being able to not to be hit. So, like, let's say I hit you, and you're like, ah, but you have, like, really good armor, so the sword just misses you? That makes no sense. So, armor decreases the amount of damage you have, and shields make it so that it's easier for you to deflect. If you think that makes sense, then go ahead and comment below. And if you have any input, then go ahead and comment that as well. Uh, criticism is welcome, and I hope you guys have input and things that I can improve on, uh, both for my videos and for my RPG. And then, so that was all five, and then some other things are there is going to be this thing called bravery dice uh, so you're gonna roll a d100 or two percentile dice and if you roll above a 50 or below 50 it goes above if it goes above a 50 that's that's good and and uh, so pretty much you're rolling for bravery um, so like you roll high you're brave you roll low you're not brave um, and then if you roll a 50, you're just like, meh. I'm going to just stand here. But, um, and one other thing is I want to input uh, this cool idea I had that I've been wanting to put in my D&D &D games called Crit Dice. Now, in D&D, &D, you roll an actual 20, you get maximum damage. That's lame. So, I made it so that if you roll an actual 20 on defense... No. Natural 20 on an attack, you get to roll a D4. Okay? And if the D4 lands on a 1, I know this is backwards, but in this situation, you want to get a 1. Because if you get a 1, that is an instant kill. If you get, you get the natural 20 and then you also get the 1. So it's very unlikely that it's going to happen, but <laughs> if it does happen, it's going to be super cool. And yeah, that's that's all I've got. Um, so yeah, if you have any ideas, go ahead and comment below. And I hope you guys are having a very good time. Um, so yeah, have a great one. 
and uh, enjoy your week.